video, I'm going to give you the process of making sure that you never run out of licks again. And this is uh, a completely different path, really, uh, because when I started out, uh, I learned licks because that was the, the fastest way to sounding like something, right? So you learn a little piece of a solo, which is really what a lick is. You take out just a little phrase there, a little sentence, a musical sentence that somebody played. Right? And then you learn that. You play it over and over and over again. And then after, you know, one or two weeks, maybe a month, two months... I don't know if that was the same thing, but but then you you can you sound like you have it under control because that's real music. It's got bending, it's got you know, it's got vibrato, it's got a, a, a cool little combination of notes, right? And 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 so all that is in there like a little package um, that you can learn and then sound like real music. But that's the the cool thing about learning licks is that it teaches you. These little, how you combine stuff. It, it, it's a little study, actually, of what, it, what another person did. Um, instead of taking a whole solo, which can take you a long time to learn, you take little pieces that you really, really like, and then you can study exactly how is he bending, why is he bending, what's that interval. And then you can uh, start designing your own... That your own little licks based on that. And so licks are a really cool uh, thing. But what they don't teach you is how to produce music on the spot. Because that's a completely different process. Of course, you can learn a lot of licks. You can learn a ton of licks. But what you really end up with is you become kind of a, a, a person who can put together pieces of a puzzle. And you can put them together in different ways. And that makes up a different puzzle each time. But pretty soon, it's going to it's going to seem like the same thing all the time, right? Because it's the same pieces that you're that you are, are using each time you are creating a new image or, or new solo, because it's based on the same basic, simple building blocks. And so you feel that, right? You feel that, ugh, this is not original. Ugh, I played this already, and so you feel that oh, I'm running out of stuff to play, which is really, in my perspective. And please don't take this the wrong way. That is really a low level challenge. Because what you really want to do in order to break completely free of that is to say licks are a cool little study in how another person put together stuff, right? And that's what it is. But to base your improv improvisation on that or your solos on that is not so cool an idea because you're basically just you know, playing the same solo over and over again. Uh, in different ways. The way to really break free of that is to learn sequences. And let's just first define what is a sequence compared to a lick. A lick is, as we said, a little piece of a solo. It has bending, vibrato, all kinds of stuff. It might even contain uh, multiple... It might contain uh, uh, several sequences within it. A sequence is basically a little melody that repeats itself through the scale. A sequence of notes that you then move uh, along the scale. So let's say you have, uh, just to explain this, three notes just going up. Right? You have a starting note and then you, you go three notes up the scale. And that's your basic little sequence of notes. And then you move that up the scale. So you play it from the root note first, then you take the second note of the scale, and then you you play the same sequence of notes, but now the notes are different, right? It's different notes from the same scale. And then you move it up one step again, and then you play it up there. And that's a sequence. That's not a lick. And this little sequence I just played doesn't belong to anyone. It's, it isn't flavored. It, it's not like, oh, that's totally, that's totally this and this player. No, it's just a mathematical little process of taking three notes, right, up the scale. So it's not really interesting yet. Let's do another sequence. Let's say you take, uh, you take two notes down, right? That's all you do. That's the, your sequence of notes. And then you take that little sequence of notes up to the next step. So now I began on the second note of the, of the C minor scale. 
Then I go to the third note of the C minor scale and play two notes down. Then I go to the fourth note of the C minor scale and play two notes down. And then I go to the Right, so I go. Right, so. That's another sequence. I could do the opposite, go up two notes and then go back. Same thing all the way. And still, this is not somebody's little melody. This is just a mathematical little, you know, thing that goes on. Um, but let's combine it. Let's make music now, because now we have two sequences. So what if I go, and then that was the first sequence, right? But I've only played that uh, twice. Let me play that other, oh, just twice. So I could go. Right? Now we have something that sounds a little bit more complex. And, oh, I could go. I could combine that with rhythm, so it's not just da 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 da, but I put rhythm in there, so I go. Oh, I can play bending and vibrato. Right, play those, those two sequences there. So by learning sequences, what I'm really doing is I'm teaching my fingers to move in different ways. And once I've practiced that to the level of mastery, they just absolutely know how to move in different ways. And so you, you create a base for your creativity and you create flexibility in your hands and in your mind. So now you can go. a bit classical but it could be you know it's everything that I play is based on sequences and the process is really learning the sequences mastering them and then combining them on the fretboard and then what happens is you start associating which we're going to talk about in another video you start putting them together in the string of associations that then becomes talking music that then becomes and then suddenly you cannot run out of licks because you don't have licks you don't have little pre-composed little bits and pieces that you put together. You have sequences that are really your basic vocabulary and the ways your fingers... Ways in which your fingers can move and that becomes the basis of what you do. And so instead of having these kind of crude uh, building blocks which are licks, little pieces of, of music that you put together, you have two notes or one note that you put together. So the, the whole thing becomes much more detailed. You, you go way down into the fabric of melody, which is basically a combination of systems, of predictable systems and variety. And that's what the human brain likes. It likes to be surprised, you know, like uh, listening to a new song that sounds familiar. That's the hit quality of the song, right? And so once you get to the point of listening to the song so many times that you know exactly what comes next, then it's boring because you have no more variety. You only have the, the system, the well-known stuff. And uh, sequences are the system. And you're combining them is what, what uh, constitutes the variety. And then you start improvising, and that's really the magical process. And um, this uh, enables you to actually create music real time. And then you have a playing style, a soloing style, a way of composing that is not based on other people's choices anymore, but are based on your unique preferences down to the bits and bytes of music.